If you have experience in a 3D hard modeling software, I recommend that you make the belt buckle in that program. But for anyone that doesn't know a modeling software, I'm going to show you how you can make an OBJ in Clo. So OBJs in Clo are made from a pattern piece and adding thickness to them. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and left click in the 2D background and enter in the height and width of my belt buckle. This is gonna be the exterior measurement of the buckle. If you wanna follow mine, I've entered 1.75 inches square. Now with transform pattern, I'll select my pattern and change the particle distance in the property editor to one. Depending on the speed of your computer, you may have to make this a little bit higher, but it should be fine because it's such a small pattern. Now I'm going to press and hold my edit pattern tool to get this smooth curve tool. You just click and drag a corner to round it out. And while dragging, you'll tap your right click to enter in a specific amount. If you want to do the first one by sight, that's fine, but still tap your right click where you want to stop and then you'll see the measurement to enter in for the other side so that they're identical. Remember to click the chain link if you want the measurements to be the same on each side of the curve and I'm entering in 0.69 inches. With the edit pattern tool, I'm going to hold shift and select all of the segments that make up the curved edge of my belt buckle. Then I'll right click on one of the lines and select offset as internal line. I'm entering 0.1 inch. When you want an OBJ to be round, no matter how big it is, in Clo you want the pattern to be as skinny as possible. The thickness isn't determined by the size of the pattern, but the rendering thickness that will add. With my edit curve point tool, I'm gonna marquee over all of these curve points on my internal line and I'm going to click and drag them back a little bit so that I can get a little variation in the thickness of my belt at the front end. Now with transform pattern I'm going to right click on my internal line and select cut. Back to edit pattern I'm going to right click on this segment and choose offset as internal line at 0.1 inches again. Then we're going to right click and cut this line as well. Then you can select this internal piece and hit delete on your keyboard. Now I'm going to select my fabric in the object browser and change the material type to metal. This isn't necessary at this stage, I'm just doing it so that I can start to get the visual of what my belt buckle will look like. Now I'll select my rounded pattern piece and change the rendering thickness in the property editor to 4. Then I'll select just the straight bit of my buckle and enter 2.5 millimeters. Now you can see what I meant when I talked about making the OBJ look truly round. So my pattern pieces aren't skinny enough and that's why I have the flat edge. So I'll need to make my patterns even skinnier in order to look truly round. With edit curve point, I'm gonna marquee over those curve points again, hold shift and drag them back out towards the edge of my buckle. Then I'm gonna right click on these curve points that are opposite the segment point and choose convert to segment point. Now with edit pattern, I can select this segment, hold shift and drag it up to make this part of the buckle thinner. I ended up editing this curve manually with my edit curve point tool. Because of that, I need to right click and split this line and choose uniform split into two pieces. Then with my internal polygon, I'll draw a line across we're going to cut this line and then delete the bottom half of the pattern. Now with edit pattern, I'm going to right click on this line and unfold. This is going to make our buckle symmetric now that we made some of those edits. Now I'm going to make this straight piece as narrow as the straight part of my other pattern and then I'll lengthen it. It's not important that it touches the other buckle exactly because with the thickness added, it's going to intersect the other buckle anyway but I want it to be a bit closer. So you can just do that visually. Now I'm gonna select all my patterns and use my gizmo to move them to the floor. So if you use the screen coordinate gizmo like I do, I use my hotkeys a lot to make sure that I'm looking at them evenly and straight on. You'll see my screen jump a lot when I hit my two key or four or six. I also hold shift when I rotate things with my gizmo. So make sure you're doing that with this gizmo to make sure that things stay straight. So I'm positioning this just a little bit above the ground and then I'm gonna put the straight bit all the way on the ground. Now I'm going to freeze the straight bit that's on the ground and then I'm gonna get my pin box tool and I'll marquee over this center part of the buckle as well as the legs. I'm gonna marquee from the top so that I'm pinning it in the same place. Then I'll select my frozen pattern piece and remove any collision thickness. Then I'll simulate and allow the buckle to fall in between. Now I'm going to right click on one of my pins and delete all pins. 
Then with my pin box tool again, I'm gonna marquee over the majority of my buckle, leaving the ends, and I'll simulate those to fall down until they line up with the bar. Now you can delete the pins and unfreeze the bar. With edit pattern, I ended up just sliding this segment point over a little bit to try and reduce how flat it was at the top edge. Now we're gonna create the notch for our prong. So with my edit pattern tool, I'm gonna right click next to that segment point and choose split. And I'll enter 0 0.088 inches in line one. We're gonna do this on both sides of the segment point. With edit curve point, I'm going to remove these curve points that were created. And then I'm gonna drag this segment point out until I get my guides to make it a straight line. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. Then I'll grab my add point split line tool and add another point here and drag it out until I create a rectangle. Depending on how it looks, you might slide this line out a bit further until you feel like you have a good little indent for your prong. Now we're just gonna copy paste this bar and create our prong from that pattern. I'm just gonna use transform pattern and hold shift to rotate it how the prong would be in 3D. I do this to make it easy to know where I'm putting pins and just make sure that my 3D and 2D match visually so I know what I'm doing. I'm going to use my gizmo to move it in 3D to situate it just above where it should sit, mostly focusing on the tip of the prong and having it sit in that notch. Then I'm going to freeze everything but the prong. I'll use transform pattern to lengthen the prong enough so that I can wrap it around the bar. I'm just doing this by sight. I need to set the collision thickness on my prong back up to 2.5 because I copy pasted it from the bar and I wanna make sure it doesn't go straight through my other patterns. Then with my pin box, I'm gonna pin the front end of my prong so that the bottom falls down. You actually do end up needing to move this out of the way of the buckle so that the back of the prong can actually fall all the way down. And then I'm gonna put some pins on the very tip of the prong so that I can move this around with my gizmo until I get the loop the way that I want. Then I delete those same pins and shorten my prong a little bit until I'm happy with the length. When I'm happy with that, I then use my gizmo to move it back how I want it arranged around my buckle. With the pin box tool, if you hold control before you marquee, you can remove pins. So I'm going to add pins on the end where my prong is looped and keep the pins at the front end and simulate to let the prong fall just a little bit so it has a curve to it. Now my buckle is finished and I'm gonna select all my pattern pieces and go to File, Export, OBJ Selected. You'll enter in the name and location that you wanna save the file and then you can use the default settings and say okay. I'm drafting my belt on top of the Ides male trouser block just so that it sits in the right place. The first thing I'm gonna do is measure the bottom of my waistband, and I'm gonna draft my belt to that length. So with my rectangle tool, I'll left click in the 2D background and enter in the length as width, and the height for my belt is gonna be one and seven sixteenths of an inch, but that's up to you. Before moving on, you should set your particle distance for your belt pattern to five. Then you can apply your materials. If you don't have a good belt material, I recommend setting the physical properties to trim hardware in this drop down menu at the bottom of your fabric. Then I'm going to set the thickness of my belt to 3 millimeters. The reason that I do that with my fabric as opposed to using rendering thickness is because rendering thickness isn't really factored in with collision and your belt can look like it's sinking into itself. Now you can set your fabric texture to whatever you want. I'm going to drag and drop a substance leather. You should arrange your belt using an arrangement point at the back waist. Then you can segment sew the front ends together. Now you can freeze your entire garment and use your gizmo to make sure it's sitting properly over the waistband. Then in the property editor, you can set the layer to one and simulate until the belt is on top of the pant. Then make sure you remove the layering. With edit pattern, now we're going to right click on the wearer's right side and offset pattern outline. This is gonna be our belt extension. Mine will be six inches. Make sure you check create internal line and this can be perpendicular. We need to use our edit sewing tool to delete the sewing that was at center front. And using segment sewing, I'm now gonna sew the internal line to the wearer's left side. Now we're going to bring in the belt buckle we made. So it should be in a folder in your library and you're gonna right click and choose add to workspace. Just make sure that you're adding it as an avatar and if you made it in Clo, the default settings are fine. You're going to arrange it with your gizmo 
and you can actually place it so that the prong is going through the eventual hole. With your belt buckle selected, in the property editor you can change the scale. I actually ended up increasing the size of my buckle. You can uncheck lock aspect ratio if you want to change any of the measurements individually. If you want to copy the size of mine, those measurements are here. With my buckle still selected, I'll change the skin offset in the property editor to 0.5. I'll also set the material type to metal and adjust the roughness and the color for the visual that I want. If you click on your belt in 3D next to your prong, you'll get the blue dot on your 2D pattern for reference, and you can grab your internal ellipse tool and left click in the pattern near the blue dot, but in the center of the belt. You'll see the guides that tell you the measurements above and below, and then you can enter in the size of the hole for your prongs. Make sure your internal lines are visible, and you can slide the hole over if you need to. Then we're going to copy paste our hole. First we'll go to the right, so hold shift and tap your right click and enter in the spacing of the holes and the quantity as two. Then we'll do the same to the left. So typically a belt would have five holes with the center hole being your main measurement and each subsequent hole is spaced one inch or two and a half centimeters apart. Now you'll hold shift and select all of the holes and right click and choose convert to hole. With the belt pattern selected, change the collision thickness in the property editor to one. Then with edit sewing, you can select the sewing at center front and delete it. Now we're gonna add the loop to the wearer's left side that wraps around the buckle. So with edit pattern, I'm gonna right click and offset pattern outline. My extension is gonna be two and three quarters of an inch and make sure to check the box for create internal line. Now we'll right click on the pattern edge again and select offset as internal line. And this is gonna be double the width of the extension we just made. This is gonna be our line that we sew to. With edit curve point, I'm gonna add a curve point to the middle of this internal line and just drag it out a little bit. Whatever amount you drag it out, make sure you remember that so that you can do the same on the pattern outline. These are gonna sew to each other and the curves need to be the same. Now with segment sewing, I'll sew the two curves together. In 3D, I'm gonna right click to hide my avatar and also select and right click to hide my pant. Now we're gonna use fold arrangement to fold back this tab, so you need to make sure that you can see your internal lines. Fold arrangement is here in 3D, so select that center front line and use the fold arrangement gizmo to slide the red line along the circle. It's going to come through your pant waistband a little bit, so we're going to grab our select mesh box tool and marquee over that area of the belt. Left click once on the green area in 3D to get your gizmo, and then slide that part of the belt out. Before simulating, I attempt to use my select mesh to loop this part of the belt through the buckle, and then also to fix this area where the prong goes through the hole. Now you're gonna grab your internal rectangle tool to create the hole for the prong. So you want this to be centered within the height of the belt and centered on the internal line here, but you can just hold control to create the rectangle from the middle out and just eyeball the size. Then you're gonna right click on it and convert to hole. After simulating, you will inevitably have to do a little bit of tweaking with your select mesh tool in order to get all of the parts of the belt properly around the buckle. I don't want this part of the belt to look sewn, so with edit sewing, I selected the sewing and deleted the seam line intensity by setting it to zero. Now we're gonna create our rivets. So using the internal ellipse tool, I'm gonna click down in the center of the hole in my belt. The reason I do this is it's the easiest way to find the center point. I'm gonna enter in about a quarter of an inch here, and then I'm gonna hold shift and drag it over and tap my right click and put in three quarters of an inch. So I copy paste the next one to be an inch and a half away so that it's three quarters away on the other side. Then I'm gonna copy and paste a second set of rivets and tap my right click to place these ones ones one and an eighth inch away from the first ones. Then with transform pattern, I'll hold shift and select all four markings, right click and choose cut and sew. Then I just need to select the internal pieces and move them out of the way of my belt pattern. With edit sewing, I marquee over all four of my rivets and change the seam line intensity to zero. Then marquee over all of the rivets again and change the particle distance to either one or 0.8 or as low as your computer will allow you. Then set the collision thickness to 0.5. With them all still selected, I'm going to assign them to their own fabric, set the physical properties to trim hardware, and then set the material type to metal 
and the same settings as my buckle. And lastly, I'll change the rendering thickness to four millimeters. Because these are pattern pieces, if you want them to stay smooth like this, then you can't simulate them. I didn't worry about it because after simulating, it gives them kind of a hammered rivet effect and that didn't bother me. But if you want them to stay like this, then you should either solidify or freeze them. If you wanna play with the slider for curvature percentage, you can make them look more or less rounded. Before simulating, you need to free sew the front rivets to the inside rivets. You'll notice that I'm sewing in the opposite direction and then I turn the sewing. That's because the belt is folded back on itself. Before I do simulate the rivets, I strengthen them with Control H or Command L on a Mac. In order to add our front loop, I'm gonna use my pin box tool and double click to put pins along the edge of my belt. Then with simulation on, I'm gonna lift my belt so that it's in line and easy to put my loop around. Using my rectangle tool, I'm gonna left click in the 2D background to enter in the dimensions of my loop. You can do whatever you want here. Mine is basically two and an eighth long by five sixteenths wide. I like to place my loop in 2D where I want it in 3D so that it's easy to just sew it. Now I'll set my particle distance on the loop to one and then I'm gonna right click on it and go to order send to back so that I can easily free sew the loop to the belt. It needs to be sitting underneath the belt in order to sew on the belt. With the loop selected, you can now right click on it in 3D and superimpose side. Before simulating, it's safest to freeze your belt and strengthen your loop. You can unfreeze your belt and use select mesh in the 2D window to pull your loop out in front of your belt. Then I'm just gonna right click and delete these pins on my belt before I simulate. The last thing to do is shape the tip of your belt. So the design is up to you. I'm going to right click here with edit pattern and split the line and enter in three inches. I'll do the same at the top. So I'm just adding a point at three inches to anchor the belt. And then I'm gonna right click on the end of the belt and say change length. I'll change the drop down menu to say both and enter in one inch. Lastly, I'll split the tip to a uniform split so it puts a point in the middle. Then I can use smooth curve to round out the corners. Smooth curve will stop at that segment point. 